Well, hello there, John Meyer here. It's Friday. If you're new to my channel, I release a video every Friday. Most of the time it's about music production, samples. And if you go over to my website, johnmeyermusic.com, you can find all kinds of samples to download for free. And if I were to have a frequently asked questions section on that website, the question would be this. John, why is it that the samples that you release in contact format don't work in the free contact player? And I have no idea why that's the case. I'm sure Native Instruments has a really good reason why they don't allow our homemade samples to work in the free player, but they don't. And I really want you all to use these samples. Since I'm a Pro Tools guy and most of you, I believe, are in Logic, what I thought I would do is revisit the samples from a few weeks ago, the Antiquarian Echo. Take those five samples, go into Logic with the new sampler plugin, and see if I can do kind of a basic tutorial on how you would get WAV files into a sampler and try to recreate what I did in contact for the Antiquarian Echo inside of the sampler. So this is gonna be kind of sampling 101 using the Logic sampler. Step one, head on over to johnmeyermusic.com. There's me. If you go down here to the samples page, you can find all of the samples that I have released, some oldies, and this guitar pad is kind of part of the sample of the week, so it's gonna go away fairly quickly. So go ahead and grab it soon. Enter your email, you'll be sent to another page. I take your email so that I can let you know about future endeavors, whatever, I'm releasing new sounds, or maybe I'm gonna sell these sounds, I don't know, but I promise I won't do anything bad with your email. So once you get those sounds, download them to your hard drive. Right here I have the Antiquarian Echo, and we're not gonna worry about the contact file. We're gonna to go to the samples file. And notice we have five, I'm sorry, six. It's a six string guitar, one for each note of the guitar. E, one, A, D, G, B, and E. And now we're in Logic. Go to Instrument and load in the sampler plugin, a stereo version of it. And now here we have the default version of sampler. I'm gonna show you the hard way to do this. I know there are uh, auto mapping ways that are much quicker, but we're gonna start with the way that I think will help you understand where these samples are going a little better. So I'm gonna start off by just grabbing one sample and I'm gonna take E1. I'm gonna grab it from my folder and I'm just gonna drop it in the sampler, right? And now let's talk about a few things that we have here. Notice that down here, we have our root key, G sharp one, pitch, the key range, and all these things are what we're gonna to need to manipulate. So this is E1. So the first thing we wanna do is change our root key to E1. All right, we are halfway there. But now, if I play E1, there's no sound, obviously. If I play up here, we start to hear the sound of the wave file. So I'm gonna drag this down and I'm gonna make this to where it is just one. But notice that when I moved this, my root key also moved. So again, we're not doing this the quickest way, but I'm going to adjust my root to E1 now to match this. So if I'm gonna move it now, it should not adjust. Now notice next to that we have a pitch button. Right now when I play E, we get the note and we can check that here by just previewing the sample. So we know that our pitch is right. And when I play the D below that, it starts to walk down. If I turn off this pitch button, it's gonna play this sample across all of these keys. So sometimes that's good when you don't want the pitch to change, but in this instance, we do want it to change. And now we are going from D0 to E1, because what I did is I took that low E and I drug it down as low as it'll go. So it's pitched way down. Let's just do something along those lines. And now we'll move on to A1. When I bring this down to the lower area of the mapping section, it only takes up one note. And so now my root key should be correct. I'm set to pitch, and now I can drag this down to meet here. Notice here that it's not going all the way up, and, and this is where the velocity comes into play. And right now, there's just one sample per note, one velocity, so we don't have to worry about that. This is gonna be more of a pad sound. But if I were to play loud down here, nothing would happen. I'd have to play super quiet to trigger it. All right, so we'll continue on. 
And now that we've got the hang of this, I'll do this rather quickly, but we can move D up here. We can move uh, what comes after E, A, D. We can take our G and move this up. We can take our B. And then we will finish off with our E3. So now we can check all these and see that our root notes are correct. So now we'll finish this process. Let's make sure that our root notes are correct. A1, D2, G2, B2, and E3. We can drag this up as well. So now when I play this, let me actually play a decent sounding chord. Now, you may like that sound. That is not what I intended the antiquarian echo to be. I walked through how I recorded these sounds in a previous video. I'll link to it and you can go check that out. But I wanted this to be more of a pad sound. So let's jump over to the zone section. And we're gonna take a look at this first note. And notice when I play this low E, you can see the note, right? I can hit this button to see exactly what is happening. I triggered each note and let it play out. And but my goal here was that I really didn't want to get into the pad sound until a point down the line. And so let's move this. Now notice there's more of a filtered effect. If we go back a ways, we don't hear the delays as much, but we're starting to hear more of a drone. I could draw in a fade like this, but I'm gonna wait on that. And so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna move each of these notes to where they start farther into the sound. If there are parts that you like more than others, feel free to do whatever you want, start it wherever you want. So now it's going to sound like this when I play a chord. We're getting some pops there. Now we're going to move to the modulator section. And when I taught a production class, I knew that the ADSR was kind of a hard thing for some students to grab. So I'm just going to do a quick, basic uh, explanation of what the ADSR is. So you got your attack time that you can slow down, or you can make it super fast. So for a pad sound, we want a slower time. Now, if this next dot here is gonna be our decay time. So there are some synths that only have an atta attack and decay. So I can press this, it goes up, and it's only taking 58 milliseconds to drop down to zero. If I move that to match my 729 or get close to it, we should hear a sound that is even from nothing, loudest point, to nothing. All right. Now, if we bring this up, we have our sustain, which is this section right here, which all this is saying is that it's going to do its normal attack. It's going to start to decay until it gets to 50% of the original volume, and then it's going to sustain out until I let go of the key. And then notice that the sound ends abruptly. So what I'm going to do here is bring up my release time, which is how long it takes for the sound to go to nothing after I let go of the key. For pad sounds, I typically want the sustain to be all the way up and then a somewhat long release. Oh, 
Over here, we can bring up the overall volume if we wanted to. Now that's starting to behave somewhat like the antiquarian echo in contact format. Now when we go to this synth section, we will see some basic filters and amp controls. On the antiquarian echo in contact format, I had a cutoff and a resonance knob just like this. So we simply turn this on. Then we can bring up the resonance control. And you have a nice, whoa, and you have a nice drive control that you can bring up. That's basically all I did in the contact version, and I recreated it fairly quickly here. Plenty of other controls you can dive in, and honestly, I have not even done that yet but you can do more to manipulate it. And that's how we make interesting sounds, is by taking the, the presets or the samples and then using these filters and modulation controls to make each individual sound work for the song that we are writing. It took me a long time to learn that I didn't necessarily need more instruments to make my productions better, but I needed to better manipulate the instruments that I had. For instance, Miking an acoustic guitar, I could adjust the way the mic was placed to have a more present sound or a more distant sound, a darker tone. Same way with synthesizers, you have all kinds of controls where you can manipulate and modulate and change the sound over time. You don't always feel the need to layer, layer, layer more sounds, but you can adapt the sound to your song. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this is new to some of you. Hopefully it inspires you to go create your own sounds. To some of you, this is old hat, but the basics are important. Sometimes we skip past it. So I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll be back next week with something new.